Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. If you'd like any of your Ramadan related questions answered this month, you can email us at questions at amau.org. وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول. The question we're going to answer today is as follows: My brother is sick and we fear this may be his last Ramadan. What are the best things for him to do to get near to Allah? in this month. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala abdillahi wa rasoolih nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in I'd like to start by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allahumma rabban nas adhi bil ba'as ishfi wa anta shafi la shifa'a illa shifa'uk shifa'an la yugadiru saqama Wallah Lord of mankind make this sickness go away Cure and you are the curer. There is no cure except your cure, a cure that leaves no sickness. And I would also like to advise the family of the brother in question about a hadith that is narrated from Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma an in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anahu qal man aada maridan lam yahdur ajaluhu faqala indahu sab'a mirar as'alullah al azim rabb al arsh al azim an yashfiyak. إِلَّا عَفَاهُ اللَّهُ مِنْ ذَلِكَ الْمَرَضِ said that whoever visits a sick person and that sick person hasn't yet reached their end and it hasn't reached it yet been decreed that they will pass away from that sickness and they say when they are with them seven times I ask Allah أَسْأَلُ اللَّهَ الْعَظِيمُ رَبَّ الْعَرْشِ الْعَظِيمُ أَنْ يَشْفِيَكْ I ask Allah the most great Lord of the great throne to cure you except that Allah will cure that person from that sickness. So this is from the etiquettes that we would advise the family that when you visit this particular brother, may Allah give him shifa and la yugadiru saqama, a shifa that doesn't leave any sickness behind, that they should say seven times, As'alullah al-Azim, Rabb al-Arsh al-Azimi an yashfiyak. And they should put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they should hope for his uh, shifa, for his cure to come. And I would also advise the sick person and I would also advise their family from the hadith of our mother Aisha radiallahu anha. The hadith is in Al-Bukhari and Muslim. That she said, Anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana idha shtaka nafatha ala nafsihi bil mu'awwithat wa masaha anhu biyadi. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he became sick, he would blow the mu'awwithat. Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq, qul a'udhu bi rabbil nas. In some of the narrations, qul huwa allahu ahad. He would blow into his hands like this. He would recite them and blow and then he would wipe over himself. He would wipe over himself and this is one of the means of seeking a cure through the Quran. So we would, these are all things that we would advise the sick person to do as it relates to their sickness and for their family to give consideration uh, to give consideration to. And I also think it's appropriate with a question like this that a person reflects upon the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ Worship your Lord until that which is certain comes to you. And that which is certain is death. Death is certain to come to me, it's certain to come to you. And there is no guarantee, there is no guarantee that I will live longer than the brother that is mentioned in that question. Subhanallah. How wonderful is it that Allah reminds us of what will happen to us. That Allah Azza wa Jal reminds his servant that his servant is going to die. That is something that all of us, a reality we all need to understand. And the, we none of us want to be from those people who we are seized suddenly and we never had any chance to turn back to Allah and we didn't have any chance to repent. So a person should not feel sad when they receive some news like that, but they should see the opportunity that Allah Azza wa Jal has reminded you that you have to make changes and do actions and worship Allah Azza wa Jal and repent and turn to Him and Allah has reminded you of what will happen to every single person. And it's also true that the sick person should be happy and should be content. They should be happy and they should be content 
that if they were regular in worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal before they became sick, then that benefit will continue for them. And that is narrated from a hadith of Abi Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu an. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا مَرِضَ الْعَبْدِ أَوْ سَافَرْ كَتَبَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى لَهُ مِنَ الْأَجْرِ مِثْلَ مَا كَانَ يَعْمَلُ صَحِيحًا مُقِيمًا The hadith is in Bukhari and others. That if a person becomes sick or they travel, Allah Azza wa will write for them the rewards as the same as what they used to do when they were healthy and resident. So inshallah ta'ala, there are so many reasons to take hope and to feel confidence and inshallah to be ready to take the opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you in relation to this, uh, in relation to this sickness. And Ramadan is a particular opportunity for this. And that's, it was a beautiful, the way the question was worded about asking that if this is the person's last Ramadan, what advice would we give to them? Ramadan is a huge opportunity. Abi Hurairah narrated from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he said إِذَا كَانَ أَوَّلُ لَيْلَةٍ مِنْ شَهْرِ رَمَضَانِ صُفِّدَتِ الشَّيَاطِينَ وَمَرَدَتُ الْجِنَّ وَغُلِّقَتْ أَبْوَابُ النَّارِ فَلَمْ يُفْتَحْ مِنْهَا بَابٌ He said that when the first night of Ramadan comes, the shayateen and the obstinate devils among the jinn are chained up and the doors of the fire are closed and not a single gate is open. وَفُتِّحَتْ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ فَلَمْ يُغْلَقْ مِنْهَا باب. The doors of paradise are wide open and not a single door of them is closed. وَيُنَادِي مُنَادٍ And a caller calls out يَا بَاغِيَ الْخَيْرِ أَقْبِلْ O doer of good, come forward. وَيَا بَاغِيَ الشَّرِّ أَقْسِرْ and O doer of evil, desist. وَلِلَّهِ عُتَقَاءُ مِنَ النَّارِ وَذَلِكَ كُلَّ لَيْلَةِ And Allah has people that He frees from the fire and that is every single night. Look at the opportunities. The doors of paradise are open. The doors of the fire are closed. The shayateen are chained. Every person who wishes good has an opportunity to do good. And everyone who has wishes evil has an opportunity to stop and desist. And Allah Azza wa Jal frees people from the fire in this month every single night from the nights of Ramadan. So we want the person to appreciate the huge opportunity that they have in this month of uh, in this month of Ramadan. And as for the deeds that the person should be doing in this month, or the deeds that we would recommend in this month, and in reality, this is a question that would benefit every Muslim, because ultimately all of us should behave as though this is our last Ramadan. All of us should feel as though this is our last Ramadan. So what specific advice? First of all, generally speaking, I would always advise that the acts of worship that Allah Azawajal has made easy for you and what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has opened your heart to be able to do with ease, you should continue those and keep them going because they are from the most beloved of the deeds to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, those regular consistent deeds that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has given you the ability to do. But as for what it relates in the month of Ramadan, then I would recommend that you go through the daily droplets series that we have with al Madrasatul Umariyah. And there are benefits mentioning deeds and actions that are specific to Ramadan. Ramadan is the month of forgiveness and so on. Lots of different things in there that you can take. And, and inshallah, from the courses that we've put up on al Madrasatul Umariyah this Ramadan, where you can inshallah benefit. But I'm just going to summarize them for you in four or perhaps five points. The first one is taking yourself to account and al-istighfar and at-tawbah. This is from the best things that a person can do in Ramadan. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu Allah wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghad. O you who believe, have taqwa of Allah and let every one of you look at what you put forward for tomorrow. Look at, let the person look at this, let the person take themselves to account, look at their deeds and make themselves accountable before Allah takes them to account and make istighfar and tawbah turn back to Allah Azza wa this is the month of forgiveness a month where it, there are a multitude of opportunities for forgiveness and tawbah and this is from the most important things from the things that a person should be careful of in Ramadan if they are able is the fasting and the salah if they are too sick to be able to fast and it's not hoped that they will get better then the person can feed the poor people half a sar, as we've mentioned in some of the other questions and the other videos, 
There's a question on the topic of sickness that I had answered previously, so you can refer to that in a bit more detail. And fasting and the prayer are extremely important because the Prophet ﷺ told us, "Man sama Ramadan iman and wahdi saba, wufira lahu ma taqaddam min dhambi." Whoever fasts the month of Ramadan with iman and hoping in the reward of Allah, then their sins in this month will be, or all their sins that they had done previously will be forgiven. And likewise, the standing in the prayer, "Man qama laylat al Qadr iman and wahdi saba, wufira lahu ma taqaddam min dhambi." Whoever stands the night of al Qadr with iman and ihtisab. Iman and hoping in the reward of Allah, they will have their sins forgiven. And Laylatul Qadr is a wonderful opportunity. Until the, now, while this video is coming out, we haven't gone into the last 10 days of Ramadan. There is an opportunity still there for you to look for Laylatul Qadr in whatever way you can do according to your health, to look for Laylatul Qadr. That is a night in which it is better than a thousand months, Laylatul Qadri, Khayrun min Alfi Shahr. It's better than a thousand months. That's better than 83 years and so many months of worship. SubhanAllah, a lifetime's worth of worship you can do in one night. And we don't know when Laylatul Qadr is, and you shouldn't be fooled by the people who they only go out on one night, rather look for it in all of the 10 nights of Ramadan. Because Sometimes the odd night can become even and the even night can become odd. So you should look for it in all of the last 10 nights of Ramadan in the hope that you will get 83 years worth of worship in, in a single night. From the things I would highly recommend is the recitation of the Quran, thinking about it and remembering Allah Azza wa Jal. This is the month of the Quran, the month in which the Prophet used to revise the Quran with Jibreel. So reciting the Qur'an, thinking about it, reflecting upon it, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Ramadan is the month of dua. Our mother Aisha radiallahu anha, she narrated that she said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do you think that if I am successful to stand in the night of Laylatul Qadr, to know which night is Laylatul Qadr, or to, or to be pre present worshipping Allah during Laylatul Qadr, ma adu? what dua should I make? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to her, Quli, Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni. O oh Allah, you are the one who is the pardons the most and you love to pardon, so pardon me. And this shows that Ramadan is a month of dua. And likewise, it is a month of as sadaqa and al jud wal karam. And the Prophet وسلم, encouraged uh, that a person uh, feeds the poor. A person gives uh, food to those who are needy. A person helps other people to break their fast. And there are even narrations in this regard with regard to the sick person. Uh, Treat your sick people with sadaqah. So Ramadan is also the month of sadaqah. And I want to conclude with a point that I think many people miss. And it is a really, really important uh, statement from Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak, rahimahullah ta'ala, the great imam. That he was a man came to him and he asked him, he said, Lo anna Allah awha ilayk, anna katamutu al ashiya, famada anta sani, kala akumu wa atlubul ilm hatta yatil mamat. A man said to Abdullah ibn Mubarak, If Allah revealed to you that you were going to die in this evening, what would you do? He said, I would get up and go and seek knowledge until the moment that death came to me. And that is why I also believe from the most important things you can do is to seek knowledge. And this advice uh, and this answer is indeed for everyone because all of us should feel like this might be our last Ramadan. And we ask Allah Azza wa to give this brother complete shifa. And that's what Allah made easy for me to mention. And Allah knows best. Wassalatu wassalam. Ala Nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.